Math test success chapter two. Uh, there's a previous video about addition and subtraction. Today we're moving on to multiplication and division. This is really essential to get dialed in really good. Otherwise, none of the other math will make sense. You can't really factor in algebra unless you have multiplication and division. We're gonna look at breaking it down, how easy it's gonna be with a little bit of practice, and then we're gonna look at long multiplication and long division. Remember with addition and subtraction, we started with the number line right here is zero. Going this way is negative one, negative two, negative three. This way is positive one, two, three, four. And then rolling a wheel this way, going positive is clockwise, going negative is counterclockwise. You just start with your number and add, going this way, or you subtract and go that way. We later call that number line x to say it could be any number or independent variable. Go to multiplication and division, we're adding a new dimension or a new axis to it. So now we're going to call this y. This thing just goes up the same way and down the same way with negative values. So if I have negative 2 plus 5, I start here. Plus means go to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. With multiplication, you're talking about area. You're talking about x and y. So if I have a square that is 3 by 2, that is saying 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is a total of 6 squares. What's 4 times 4? Well, how many total squares is that? Well, that's going to be 4 squares by 4 squares. It's going to be 4 sets of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 sets of 4 is 16. What's 5 by 4? Well, you could figure it out as it could be 5 sets of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or four sets of five, one, two, three, four. Four sets of five is saying I got five, 10, 15, 20, um, and that's the area inside. So when you're looking for length of a line, it's one dimensional, it's gonna mean say inches. If you're looking for area, it's gonna be multiplication, it's two dimensional, it's gonna be inches times inches or inches squared. So that's the idea behind multiplication and division. Just like subtraction reverses addition, Division reverses multiplication. So it's like saying four times what number will give me 20 squares? So what I'm saying is 20 divided by four will tell me how many. 20 divided by four, I can write it like that as a fraction, or 20 divided by four. And what I'm saying is I got 20 squares, I got a set of four, how many fives do I, or how many uh, rows do I need? and that's equal to five. Okay, the key to doing this, and long division, long multiplication, is you gotta know your multiplication tables, 10 to 10, so let's take a look at those. So here's a multiplication table. It is 10 rows by 10 columns. You could go up to 11 or 12, but you have to know this perfectly. So the first row is easy, one times one is one, one times two is two, one times three is three. So you know the first row is the same as what you're, it's going to be the same number. The second row, all I'm doing is doubling this, right? So it's really adding, so 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6. So I got my 1's downs, 2's down. The key to memorizing, you know, this 100 numbers, 10 by 10, is to break it into small pieces. So when I get to my 3's, 3 times 1 is 3, and then I'm just adding by 3. So I go 3, 6, 9, 12, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 5 is 15, uh, and then I just kind of work that way. 3 times 7 is 21. My 5s are kind of easy. I just count by 5s, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, so I get my 5s figured out. My 10s are pretty easy. All right, so here are some single problems right here. This is straight out of the multiplication table. Pause the video, do those five problems, make sure you have them, unpause the video. Write out a table, three times five, same as five times three. Multiplication is commutative, meaning I can do this thing times that thing, 
or that thing times this thing, same thing. It's going to be 15, 56, 36, 36, 22. And now we've got larger numbers, 23 times 14. I'm going to write these out, 23 times 14. And I can't really do these until I have my single digits figured out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the bottom here. 4 times 3 is 12. I write the 2 and the 12 right there, and I carry the 1 up here, because that, that's actually a 10. So now I have 4 times 2, 8, and then i got to add that to it, 9. I keep a placeholder here because I'm multiplying by 10. Right, that, that 1 right there in the 14 is actually a 10 and a 4. I'm going to put a placeholder here. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 2 is 2. Now that I have those two rows, I add them together. 2, 9 plus 3 is 12. Carry the 1. 1 and 2 is 3. So 23 times 14 is 322. And just as a ballpark number, 20 times 10 is 200. 20 times 5 is 300. So I'm expecting something in the 300 range. Pause the video and do those two. Unpause, watch how I do it. 45 times 32. 2 times 5, 10. Carry the 1. 2 times 4, 8. Plus 1, 9. Placeholder. 3 times 5, 15. 15, carry that 1. 3 times 4, 12. Plus that 1, 13. Add straight down, 0. 14. Carry a 1, 4, and a 1. See if that even makes sense. I'm just going to go down. 40 times 40 would be 1,600. So I certainly am in the ballpark right there. Last problem right here. 67 times 58. Put them right below each other. Again, you know, if I round this up to 60, down to 60, like in the 3,600 range. 8 times 7, 56, carry the 5. 48 plus 5, 53. There's my placeholder. 5 times 7, 35, carry the 3. 5 times 6, 30, plus that 3, 33. Add straight down, 6, 8, 8, and 3. There's my answer for that third one right there. All right, let's go ahead and try a couple of word problems. Number one right here, 12 eggs in one carton. How many eggs are in five cartons? So this is saying 12 times five, right? It's saying I got 12 rows. I have five sets of 12 rows or 12 sets of five rows. Um, I could do that. It's not in our multiplication table, but I could go five times 10 is 50, five times two is 10. So 12, so 12 times five is that 50 and that 10 to give me 60. That was multiplication, now let's go over division. Division's just the reverse of multiplication. So if I have a problem like 20 divided by five, that's saying I am in the body of the table, 20 divided by five, what's the other number? Four. So you can see how division is not going to make sense until multiplication table is kind of ingrained in your memory. What is 56 divided by 8? Well, 56 and 8 has to be 7. What is 63 divided by 9? Well, then I'm going to the other side and it's 7. All right, let's do some practice division problems and then some long division. Okay, 12 divided by 3. Pause the video and do these problems in your notebook. And then watch how I do them. 12 divided by 3. Well, 3 times 4 is 12. 28 divided by 7. 7 times 4 is 28. Or 28 divided by 7 is 4. 36 divided by 9 is 4. 
9 times 4 is 36. 48 divided by 6 is 8. I saw in the comments somewhere, somebody hates the way I draw my H. <laughs> Sorry about that. 22 divided by 2 is 11. Right here are some longer ones right here. 91 divided by 7. If I, don't, if I can't do that in my head, I just write it out this way. 91 divided by 7. 7 goes into 9 one time, so I put the 7 below it. 9 minus 7 is 2. Bring down the 1, 7 goes into 21 three times. So 91 divided by 7 is equal to 13. 144 divided by 12, you might recognize that as a perfect square. If not, you could write it out this way. 144 out of 12. 12 goes into 14 one time. I write it below. I subtract 4 minus 2 is 2. Bring down this 4. 12 goes into 24 two times. So 144 divided by 12 is 12. Then 255 divided by 15. 15 goes into 25 one time. That goes there. 25 minus 15 is 10. Bring down this 5. 15 goes into 105. Well, 15 times, let's see if I can figure one out, like 10 is 150. 5 is 75. So now I'm going to just keep adding them up. Um, 75, 85, 90, 105. So that was a 7. So 255 divided by 15 is 17. All right, let's keep going down here um, with some remainder problems now. 43 divided by 5, it doesn't go in there. Let me clean the screen up here. Okay, let's do some problems where they're not going to be clean division problems. 43 divided by 5. Well, 5 times 8 is 40, so it'll go in there 8 times. Once it goes in there 40, I'm left over with 3, and then that becomes a fraction 3 over that number 5, so 8 and 3 fifths. 79 divided by 8. 8 times 9 is 72. 72 to 79 is 7. 7 eighths left over. 125 divided by 11. So I'm saying 125 divided by 11. 11 goes into 12 one time. 2 minus 1 is 1. Bring down the 5. 11 into 15 one time. 15 minus 11 is 4. So it's going to go in there 11. That's my remainder, 4 11. So 11 and 4 11. So what I like to do on word problems is mark up the key numbers. There are 36 cookies and six friends. How many cookies does each friend get? So I have 36 cookies divided by the six friends. Each person gets six cookies. Six friends times six cookies gives me a total of 36. 28 students is, are going on a field trip. Each car can hold four. How many cars are needed? 28 divided by that 4 is equal to 7. Here's that last problem right there. 5,678 divided by 23. 23 doesn't go into 5. In a 56, it goes in there twice to give me 46. 56 minus 46 is 10. Bring down that 7. 23 and a 107, 5, it's going to go in there 4 times. 4 times 23, 4 times 20 is 80, plus 12, 92. 7 minus a 2 is 5, 10 minus a 9 is 15, bring down the 8. 23 and a 158, 6 times, 7 times, it would be 6 times. So 23 times 6, 18, 120, 130. The check is 138 plus 23 is more than 
158. So this is a 6. 138. 8, 0. 15 minus 13, 2. So I have 20 left over. So I have 246 with a remainder of 20, or 246 and 20, 20 thirds. All right, if you need a channel, think about subscribing. I sure hope this was helpful. I know it's hard to go all the way back to this early math, but if you don't have multiplication and division down, all that algebra is going to be hard to do because when you're factoring problems, you got to know what those factors are kind of immediately. All right, thank you for watching.